So now we had this template notation for a reaction earlier but now let us suppose that we consider that we have forward and reverse reactions all right that means we are saying that we, we have one set of reactions that are going the forward direction another set of reactions that are going the backward direction. Now we could have actually written this as two sets of reactions all right all of them going in the forward direction it is essentially that means like for example if you now went from k equals 1 to m you can now write these as two sets and from k equals m plus 1 to 2 m you will now have the other set of reactions okay. So if you now write it this way uh, then this m is uh, half as uh, uh, before that is what it amounts to okay. If it is possible that in the previous set some of them were not going through reverse reactions then those reverse reactions will have nu i k single prime as well as nu i k double prime equal to 0 in the previous set all right. So let us suppose that in the previous set we had a, a full set of which some of them were actually reverse of the other but some of them were not okay. The nu i k single prime and nu i k double prime for, the, for them both will be 0 for a hypothetical reaction that is a reverse which does not really happen at all. So it is possible for you to write this in terms of what we did before also that is that's what I am saying. So we, we can write omega i k equal to nu i k double prime minus nu i k single prime omega k. Keep in mind we had this yesterday and we are using the symbol omega right and this is for a particular species omega i k i is for the ith species and k is for the kth reaction right. So when you when you are able to actually write it for a particular species you, you might be able to go from a molar reaction rate to a mass a mass based based reaction rate okay so that is from moles per second per meter cubed to kilograms per second per meter cube by multiplying by the molecular weight all right so we could do that and that is what will actually be used in the mass balance because the mass balance is looking for number of the amount of mass that is produced to consume rather than number of moles that are produced to consume we will go through a molar conservation equation also okay at that at that time we will try to use number of moles but when you try to use mass we will change from Greek to uh, just English English alphabet so from omega will become w small w so th those are things that we will uh, talk about but this is something that we did yesterday yeah so here here omega k is now this is for the kth reaction out of 1 to m you see therefore there is like a forward reaction rate and a backward reaction rate right so there is like something that is going forward and then some of it is getting consumed therefore it has to actually be subtracted out yeah so then we, we can say this is uh, kfk uh, pi i equals 1 to n um, c i nu i k single prime minus k b k pi i equals 1 to n c i to the nu i k double prime right. By the way it is customary to actually indicate the specific reaction rate or the rate constant on top of the arrow for a given reaction to indicate that that is the kinetic data that we are looking for okay pretty much k contains the kinetic data your a and e or b m and e what we saw yesterday all that stuff is contained in this 
so to say that you have this means that you are supplying the kinetic data for this particular reaction rate uh, specific reaction rate constant here what, what we see that is like C i to the new i k single prime means we are looking at the forward reaction having the new i k single prime the, the species as reactants with the new i k single prime as the coefficients you say C i k C i to the new i k double prime we are now looking at the reactants over here as the reactants for the backward reaction that is the reason why you are using new i k double prime okay. right then at equilibrium at equilibrium omega k equal to 0 that means the rate at which the forward reaction takes place should be equal to the rate at which the backward reaction takes place okay then you have a equilibrium it is a dynamic equilibrium okay that means it does not mean that the reactions are not taking place the reactions are taking place you have a forward reaction going on you have a backward reaction going on but the rate at which the forward reaction is going on is the same as the rate at which the backward reaction is going on okay so it is a dynamic equilibrium React, reactants are being produced and consumed all the time in, the, in, the, in that situation. So we then say k uh, k f k pi i equals one to n c i to the new i k single prime equal to k b k pi i equals one to n c i to the new i k double prime right therefore k f k divided by k b k equal to pi i equals 1 to n c i to the new i k double prime divided by pi i equals 1 to n c i to the new i k single prime which is nothing but pi i equals 1 to n c i to the new i k double prime minus new i k single prime. Now what does this look like we have seen this a little bit before maybe about a couple of classes back except we did it for like let us say um, hydrogen oxygen reaction specifically or something like that anybody what is it K, KP capital KP huh so this is actually it is not KP here because this is actually based on concentrations whereas we wrote this in terms of partial pressures earlier okay so when you had partial pressures we had like partial pressure of a product raised to its stoichiometric coefficient times partial product pressure of another product raised to its stoichiometric coefficient if you had two products divided by partial pressure of reactant to its stoichiometric coefficient times partial pressure of another reactant if you had another one more reactant to the uh, its stoichiometric coefficient and so on. So we had this before that is what that is what we are going through but in terms of partial pressures we call it KP uh, which is exact which is basically the capital KP which is the uh, equilibrium constant based on pressure or partial pressures here we are writing in terms of concentrations therefore uh, this actually is KCK which is the um, equilibrium equilibrium constant based on concentration okay fine since C i is equal to P i divided by R t how do you get this number of moles per unit volume 
is essentially molar concentration number of moles of species I divided by the volume is the molar concentration of species I so if you, the, the ideal gas equation of state is valid for each species therefore um, Ni divided by capital V is equal to Pi divided by RT right therefore we can write Ni divided by capital V is Ci we can relate the partial pressure to the concentration uh, and further we did not like partial pressures even last time we wanted to get to the total pressure therefore we use the mole fraction which has been defined now properly for us uh, divided by RT in fact uh, this is this is RU we are talk, talking in terms of number of moles molar concentration and so on this is RU for ideal gases right therefore K CK equal to pi you can just plug, plug this in there and then say I equals 1 to N XI to the new IK double prime minus new IK single prime um, P over or U T to the this P over R U T is going to be constant this will be, should be like a common factor for each of those X i's right. So X i goes through this the fate of what C i went through but then when you now have the P i over R T that is common for all of them then it gets summed over all of the species right. So you now have um, I equals 1 to N new I k double prime minus new I k single prime. So in effect this is nothing but k p k which we were familiar with to begin with times p over r t to the power sigma i equals 1 to n nu i k double prime minus nu i k single prime trying to squeeze there okay. So from here you can see that the kinetics is related to equilibrium and this is something that you are not unfamiliar with you must have gone through this in your high school for regular uh, reactions and so on uh, but here we are trying to put, put all of them together in, in, in the algebraic notation that we are coming up with for a general set of forward and reverse reactions yeah. and that is a relationship between equilibrium uh, constant based on concentration and equilibrium constant based on so this is equilibrium constant uh, based on uh, partial pressures. Okay. Before we proceed from here, the next thing that I would like to discuss here is um, order of a reaction versus molecularity. Okay, molecularity of a reaction. <coughs> order of order of uh, reaction versus molecularity of reaction. Okay, so many times we come across we come across um, these these things like we have a first order reaction or a second order reaction. Okay. And sometimes we also hear this thing like we have a unimolecular reaction or a bimolecular reaction or a termolecular reaction and so on okay. 
So what are we talking about? Any feel for this? We have to try to sort of anglicize this, right? So that means we have to say what we are what we are hearing in English, okay, in, in typical sentence. It's not very difficult to think about. For example, what's what's a bimolecular reaction? That means we are looking at a reaction where you have two molecules that are colliding with each other to react. That means, as far as the reactants are concerned, we want to have. Um, two molecules of different species one molecule each one molecule each of two different species have to collide with each other can we say that or could it be like two molecules of the same species have to collide with each other yes no Obviously if you want to have a species react molecules have to collide that is something that we started talking about as, as an axiom. So even if one particular species just disintegrates why would it disintegrate? It would disintegrate because molecules of itself start colliding with each other. right? And then you could think well maybe I need two molecules to collide instead of just one molecule disintegrating by itself without any collision huh would that be bimolecular okay so let us have this thing in, in our minds okay of course now if you can extend this confusion to uh, let us say termolecular which is pretty easy you can now say I want to have three molecules of different three different species each three molecules each of three different species in a in a termolecular reaction or a trimolecular reaction or I could have like two from one and one from the other <laughs> and so on right okay so we have that situation So what would you do for, for example let us suppose that you had a reactant A and I say that I want to have 2A gives products how do I write the reaction rate would I now say that the reaction rate for this reaction is equal to K times concentration of A squared or can I say well let me divide it by half I mean to divide, divide the whole thing by 2 and then say A gives half of products. <laughs> Yeah, and therefore the reaction rate should be equal to K times concentration of A raised to the power 1. There is a big difference. You cannot have a rate either depend linearly on the concentration of A or a square of the concentration. They are vastly different. So which one would you do? And then let us suppose so you have something like 2H2 plus O2 gives products let us not worry about the products because the, the, the law of mass action is only uh, depending upon the reactant concentrations right. So 2H2 plus O2 gives products versus H2 plus half O2 gives products how would you write your reaction rates would you write this as K times concentration of H2 to the power 2 times concentration of O2 or would you write it as K times concentration of H2 times concentration of O2 to the half the two expressions are vastly different right. So what is the reality <laughs> which, which is the right answer could you just recklessly divide the reaction by whatever number you want like I just say divide by 2 all over and then I now come up with a new reaction rate constant expression I do not know which is right then until now we did not care we could we could divide 
and say okay uh, half a mole here one mole there does not matter but now we have an implication these things are now going to show up as exponents of the concentrations of the reactants in the reaction rate expression and we cannot be fiddling around with this. So what is going on? Right. The answer is if you now look at a reaction where you are talking about like let us say H2 plus half O2 gives H2O you know that it is not really happening that way because you cannot have half a molecule of oxygen react with one molecule of hydrogen okay it is not like oxygen is half heartedly reacting with hydrogen right. So we have always been saying it should be half a mole and half a mole contains a large number of molecules. So when you now look at actually the molecules what are they doing obviously you need to have them react one on one you cannot have half a molecule do with another one or another half right. So if you now have anything that has like a half you know that it is not a molecular level reaction that we are talking about. It is, it is what is called as a global reaction okay and for a global reaction you could now write the law of mass action globally and there you could have the exponents to the concentrations raised to whatever value it does not have to be integers you get the point. So let us try to write this we have something called global kinetics right. So consider the stoichiometric reaction does not have to be a stoichiometric reaction. But let us consider this reaction CH4 plus 2O2 gives CO2 plus H2O right okay this does not happen as it is okay this does not happen as it is although thermodynamically feasible thermodynamically feasible okay it does not happen in reality yes. You are going back to this can you say what you are asking. That is fine that is oh did I make a mistake should we have this no 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 let us just keep it this way no I think I made a mistake you are right. you do not have the P here that is what you mean yeah. correct thank you right because what, what she is saying is this pressure should actually go along with this for you to have a PI small PI yeah okay fine you go back to what we were talking about fine so what I am saying is this this reaction actually does not happen the way it is written here that means it is not a it is not like CH4 a, a molecule of CH4 
reacts with two molecules of oxygen that is not what is going on in reality when you now get methane and oxygen together okay what else is going on what are what happens in reality in reality unfortunately for you you now have a huge set of reactions that are that kick in the moment you get this to go okay so the first thing that happens is like you now have methane break down into methyl like CH3 CH2 CH those kinds of radicals and also release some uh, H radicals okay and then you now have a pool of these radicals right oxygen could split it uh, into O and O can actually get together with H to form OH and lots of such things lots of such things such things are happening so similarly similarly H2 plus half O2 gives H2O does not does not happen as it is and we saw this we can't we said that we cannot have half an oxygen molecule get together with hydrogen molecule we are okay with half a mole of oxygen getting reacting with hydrogen on the whole okay but essentially when you say on the whole then these reactions are now representing what is called as global reactions that are representative of a huge set of reactions that kick in at the molecular level. So those reactions that are happening at the molecular level are what is called as elementary reaction steps in a reaction scheme. So this is the terminology that, that, that is typically used. So you have a reaction scheme that means you have a scheme of lots of reactions going on and each of those reactions that we talk about in reality would be like an elementary reaction step that is happening at the molecular level right. But all of it together could be represented by a global reaction. If you now have this kind of a global reaction then so let us now go back to this example right then if you want to now write the let us say the production rate of CO2 concentration right so DC CO2 divided by DT that is like saying DCI over DT where I is for CO2 okay you can now write this as K CH4 power P um, C subscript O2 power Q we will not write we will not write for this reaction P equal to 1 and Q equal to 2 no okay because P and Q are to be found empirically many times in many applications you will find that these values are more like P is of the order of like 0 0.15 0 0.15 and Q is like about 1.65 so you see that first of all they are not integers number one number two it is got nothing to do with the coefficients of these reactants that are appearing in the global reaction because the global reaction is like a representation of what is happening in reality through a huge number of elementary reaction steps in a reaction scheme and to give you an idea of what, the, what is how huge it is for the methane oxidation you could be thinking about like at least about 100 reactions 100 reactions minimum okay and the, the number of species that it produces because it is now splitting into CH3, CH2 uh, CH, H, O, OH all, all those kinds of things it could be as many as about 40 species okay we are now looking at fairly large number of reactions and 
not so hope, mostly not so large number of species but relatively large for, for, for this right again here you will be thinking about like a few tens of reactions that are really happening and a, a uh, let us say handful of species at least okay 5 to 10 species that are involved at, at the molecular level. You can go back and write the law of mass action as it is looking at a reaction and figuring out the coefficients there and then plugging it in here only for the molecular level reactions okay. So if you now do that if you now are sure that a reaction is actually a molecular level reaction and not a global reaction then you look at the reaction you can write the um, law of mass action the, the, the rate of production of a particular species or the reaction rate as k times concentration of the reactants raised to the respective coefficients that are seen in the reaction. Those will typically be integers because we have to have integral number of molecules of each reactant react right and then we can say you have a molecularity of the reaction is essentially the number of molecules of reactants that are participating there. So there if you now add up those exponents that are happening at the molecular level that gives you the molecularity of the reaction okay. So if you had a termolecular reaction where you are now saying 2H plus O gives you H2O that let us say that is like that is one molecular level reaction that is happening then you can say it is a termolecular reaction that because that is because you need to have two hydrogen atoms collide with one oxygen atom to form a water molecule but you could also now distinguish and say the reactions molecularity is 2 in hydrogen atom and one in oxygen that means you should now be able to say what is the molecularity in each of the reactants that is that is the next level of refinement in trying to identify the molecularity right. It is also possible for you to say this for what is called as a order of reaction An order of reaction is typically like what we are talking about for a global reaction. So in a global reaction P plus Q will now give you the order of the reaction which are empirical constants right and then you can further say the reaction is of pth order relative to methane and qth order in oxygen you see you can, you can, you can say that that, that, that that is all common uh, practice to identify what is the reactions order in each of those species each of those reactants for a global reaction okay. Of course for a elemental reaction step that is happening at the molecular level the molecularity and the order are the same but the order is not the same as the molecularity when you are looking at a global reaction and it has got nothing to do with the stoichiometric coefficients that are obtained for mass balance essentially when you are trying to do a uh, balancing the reaction you are essentially doing a mass balance okay you want to balance the same number of nuclei and each of those nuclei have some mass right that is what you are trying to do good. So n plus uh, n if you now say n equals p plus q is the order of uh, reaction and uh, need not be need not be uh, integer it need not be an integer okay so p and q need not be integers Can they be negative? <laughs> what does that mean? 
if you now throw in a reactant the reaction rate actually comes down <laughs> and why would it why would why would you have the reaction in the first place yeah it's it's possible under some circumstances and I think we will we will proceed further and I'll try to explain that to you because we are trying to sort of globalize a, a series of reactions that are happening and under different conditions you could now have different um, emphasis for the role of each of those reactants sometimes it's also possible for the reaction rate or the rate of production of your products or rate of depletion of your reactants whatever to be depending globally globally speaking depending on product concentrations also so that looks like a violation of the law of mass action okay and many times in under those circumstances the exponent for the concentration concentration of product dependence on the reaction rate will be negative which is what is called as a self inhibiting reaction okay that is more and more the product is formed the less and less the reaction is going to happen because as the concentration of the product increases the the the, the uh, reaction gets inhibited because there is like a self inhibition mechanism okay we will also look at some examples for that okay as we, as, as we go along but these are basically looking at the global reactions at the molecular level we do not have any problem we can just go ahead and do whatever we did with the law of mass action the previous class right fine can we do we have to have a global reaction that is only one step can we have like multi step global reaction yes or no no why not while we are having fun might as well have more fun huh this is not fun at all huh? <laughs> right so global kinetics need not be single step right that is we could write the same reaction as above in two steps okay CH4 plus 2O2 Okay, and then let us say that this has a rate constant K1 you CO plus 2H2O plus half O2 right and then you have CO plus half O2 gives K2 with the rate constant K2 it gives you CO2 keep in mind I have a gap here so I am going to fill it in with something right question is why would you do this why would why, I mean do we understand why we want to have a global reaction right that means we do not want to go through the details we do not want to go through what is happening in at the molecular level we do not want to burden ourselves with those 100 reactions and 40 species and all those things we, can, can I get away with chemistry no I cannot that is combustion huh? well you can <laughs> it is possible if you now instead of thinking about global kinetics we now have something called infinite rate chemistry that is something that I will uh, talk about in the context of diffusion flames as we, as we go along we try to try to sidestep chemistry completely okay but short of sidestepping chemistry the best we can do is to globalize. <laughs> It means you just have one single step that represents all the details unfortunately the K will still be represented as an Arrhenius reaction and the A and the E that we have or the B M and E that we have 
as well as the P and Q all have to be obtained empirically because it does not happen in reality right we do not do quantum mechanical calculations to obtain those not that we do that for all the other molecular level reactions but it can be done it is tedious but it can be done okay but we do not do it for global reactions so that means we have to get numbers from literature for global reactions which are empirically obtained but while you are there why would you want to do like a two step global reaction and of course when you do two step you could do three step you could do five step not 100 step and so on right why would you do that why would you want to now split the global reaction which was convenient nice reaction and then have a splitting headache over it right any ideas in this case we are not just interested in this, this reaction going on we would like to see if we can track how much CO is being produced. So if you are particularly interested in a intermediate right I would like to now write my global reactions in such a way as to include that species showing up as a product in one reaction and a reactant in another reaction possibly the two rates are not going to be the same right so you are now going to have a CO that is being formed as an intermediate and I like to know how much it is and I like to see if it is actually going to be completed, completely consumed as much as it is getting produced which means I now start looking at what is my K1, what is my K2 right. So I can then write <coughs> here, so we will try to fill the gap here DC, uh, DCH2O for example over DT equals you could write, write this for CO as well maybe, maybe, maybe uh, yeah okay let us just do this. Uh, K K one C C H four to the P one C O two to the Q one and uh, here we say D C C O two divided by D T equals K two. CCO P2 to, to the P2 CO2 to the Q2 right and then we will have to empirically find out what is your K1 and K2 which in turn means we have to now know what is our A1 and E1 or B1 M1 and E1. Uh, A2 and M2 or B1 M B2 M2 and T E2 for these 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 are the kinetic constants and then you have these P1 and Q1 here P2 and Q2 here which all have to be empirically supplied but provided we can actually try to get those empirical relationships what this tells you is if you were to have this situation it's pretty much like the rate of production of water and rate of production of carbon dioxide are actually the same but here we will now be able to distinguish that the rates of production of water and rate of production of carbon dioxide are different depending upon the individual rates at which these things happen and look at something very 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 interesting that is going on you see that in this reaction the first reaction carbon monoxide has to be produced before the second reaction can happen so the second reaction rate will depend on the concentration of carbon monoxide which is produced in the first reaction if you the first reaction did not happen the second reaction cannot happen right and when the second reaction happens it competes for the same oxygen as the first reaction they are happening simultaneously right. So you have methane getting oxidized carbon monoxide also is getting oxidized by the same oxygen in the pool so it is as if like methane was trying to get oxidized it produced some carbon monoxide the carbon monoxide now begins to actually eat up the oxygen that is trying to oxidize the methane and then reduces the rate of that reaction 
because it is consuming some oxygen but if it reduces the rate of that reaction it cannot get oxidized so it reduces so you see what is going on there is like a competition between these two but it has to be sequential it is sort of like mother and daughter competing <laughs> with each other <laughs> okay one of them gives rise to the other but then they, they compete right. So it is pretty, pretty interesting dynamics here and it will depend on what your K1 is, what your K2 is there. So think about K1 being much lower when compared to K2, see what happens then you have like it takes forever to get this going but the moment this, this happens it will immediately form the next reaction. The moment the next reaction immediately tries to happen it tries to rob O2 and then slows that down that means this also has to slow down because CCO has to come down you see. So there is a nice, nice dynamics that, 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 that you can think about in these things which will finally fetch you a certain carbon monoxide that may be remaining that means you are trying to track carbon monoxide and that means you have to bring that in as part of your global reaction set. Now we are now beginning to talk about global reaction set rather than just one global reaction that is the reason why we are thinking about um, a, a, a uh, two step global reaction. There are much more complicated systems that, that are there so typically in, in, in uh, chemistry uh, that, that, we, that you want to encounter like hydrocarbon oxidation methane is like the simplest hydrocarbon okay one carbon atom. Then you get into step into things like ethane, ethene, and ethine, and all those things, right? And then you have acetylene, sorry, not ethene, acetylene, and uh, propane, and propene, and butane, butene, and all those things. So you keep on going, and then you get into heavier hydrocarbons, heptane, and so on. And then you now go to dodecane, and all those things. That's like you now begin to get into things like petrol, diesel, those kinds of things. benzene is like somewhere in between there, and and so on. So you keep on growing and growing this number of the elemental reaction steps becomes more longer and longer right but we are still talking about a carbon hydrogen oxygen system if you want to now use air to oxidize and then you are interested in NOx that means you have to now factor in oxides of nitrogen being formed Okay. then you are now throwing in one more atom type into the pool and the set of reactions that you have to consider there at the molecular level becomes a lot more. So you suddenly you are looking at about 500 reactions happening okay. So I used to be working with uh, ammonium perchlorate uh, reacting with polybutadiene right. So the polybutadiene is like a polymer that is based on like a butadiene as a monomer and so on you are looking at about 4 carbon atoms in a monomer but you now have a chain that is about having a molecular rate of about 2000 <laughs> okay, which has to break down and then react with ammonium perchlorate and then there you have ammonia and perchloric acid that are formed and then you have a chlorine that is coming up as a new atom type and uh, apparently ammonium perchlorate can actually react by itself it is like a monopropellant and it is estimated that there are like about 1000 reactions that are actually happening in a very thin layer of about 5 to 10 microns thick which we cannot even see for most, most part because the temperature gradients are so steep right and typically it is approximated by 5 global reactions so it is like the typical number we are looking at okay so from, from 1000 we try to reduce it down to something like 5 so that we can handle it okay are there better ways of handling it in a more realistic manner we will wait and watch Monday.